in this video we will talk about the full feedback uh, version of the problem so before i start i want to thank nsf award ccf 1749864 so recall that in the full feedback version after playing an action at the entire payoff vector ft that was uh, chosen by the adversary is shown to the algorithm this problem is sometimes also called prediction with expert advice so the reason is the that the first time this was stated this was stated as a prediction problem where you have many experts and in each each round each of these experts gives some advice on what the correct label is and then the goal of the algorithm is to find out who the best expert is and then make its own prediction so in this uh, lecture we will talk about this well known algorithm called hedge this is due to freund and shapiri from 96 this optimally solves the problem so it it achieves the asymptotically asymptotically optimal regret and this algorithm is based on this paradigm called the multiplicative weights update paradigm or mw in short so this initially when this algorithm came out it was stated uh, in this particular form but then since then this particular Uh, paradigm has been rediscovered and variants of this have been used in many other problems so i would refer you to this uh, excellent survey by arora hazan and kale from 2011 where they give some applications of the multiplicative weight update algorithm especially in theoretical computer science so let's uh, try to see intuitively what's the right strategy right so since uh, and after every time step you see the entire feedback one natural strategy is to just play the action that has the maximum uh, cumulative reward or cumulative payoff until this point right so uh, that's a strategy you would try but there's a problem with that strategy the problem with that strategy is that you would very quickly overfit to the action that have good payoff in the beginning uh, as opposed to the same uh, good payoff in a different action but coming at a later stage in the game and by the time you switch from the best action to the action which has good payoffs in the end it it may be too slow so the main idea of hedge is to fix this so uh, it still follows the action with the best cumulative payoff but you want to make sure that in case you see very good rewards in the beginning and then the uh, another action starts to get good rewards that algorithm has to quickly switch so the main idea is instead of looking at the cumulative payoff look at the cumulative exponentials of the payoff so take the payoff take its exponential and then take uh, pick the action that has the highest cumulative exponential so intuitively at a high level this is the main idea of the hedge algorithm so let's see how how this is implemented formally so hedge uh, as an algorithm takes a learning rate eta which is between 0 and half as input so uh, and then what it does is the following so it maintains a set of weights for each of the action so in the initialization step for each action a in k it uh, it sets the weight to be 1 let's call it to be w w1 of a to be 1 so w1 of a to be is 1 for every action right and then in each time step uh, t what we do is that uh, we just normal so we consider a normalizing factor zt which is just the sum of all weights and then convert this weights to a distribution so the coordinate uh, i is going to be wt of i divided by this normalization factor zt so you're just going to uh, change these weights to this uh, distribution and recall in the online learning framework or the adversarial online learning framework the algorithm's goal is to produce a produce a distribution so here pt will be the distribution that the algorithm produces and then as required by the online learning framework we'll sample an action at corresponding to this di distribution pt so an action a will be chosen with probability pt of a right so you sample this action at and then the algorithm re receives a reward or a payoff of ft of at so the algorithm receives a reward of ft of at and then now we have to update the weights so the way we do it this is why it gets the multiplicative weights update uh, name so wt plus 1 of a is uh, given by wt of a 
times this 1 plus eta, which is the learning rate, to the power f t of a. So it's it's an it's an exponential with the, with the base of the exponential being one plus eta, and the power being f t of a for action a, right? So you do this for all actions. Critically, uh, to update this weight, note that you need the full feedback since you're updating it for all actions. You need to know what f t of a is for every action, right? So this this is this is the part of the algorithm where we're using the full feedback version. So this is essentially the main idea of the algorithm. You maintain an exponential of the cumulative exponential of the weight where the base is one plus eta and uh, you update the weights. So another way to interpret one plus eta is also to note that one plus eta is approximately e to the eta. If you use the Taylor series expansion and eta is small enough. So uh, usually this is the, the other way to state this is also where the weights is wt of a times e to the power eta times ft of a. Uh, for historical reasons, I've stated it in the form of 1 plus eta, but you might as well use e to the power eta times ft of a. Uh, in fact, that is essentially what we'll do in the, alg in the analysis. So we'll kind of uh, upper or lower bound 1 plus eta by e to the eta and then our analysis will go through. So it's just for historical reasons, I've stated it in this form. Okay, so now the algorithm is, the definition of the algorithm is clear. So let me first state what kind of guarantees hedge gets, right? So let me see, let's see what guarantees it gives. So I will state a fairly general st statement about the guarantee of hedge. The reason I'm stating, I'll state this is because this will, this form, this particular guarantee of hedge will be useful in many applications. And in fact, like when, whenever you would want to use hedge, you would likely want to use this particular form of guarantee. We'll in fact see for exp3, we will need this guarantee. And then of course, we'll also derive a corollary which will bound the actual regret, which is what we, we are looking after. Okay, so what does this general regret bound say? So it says that for any choice of eta between zero, zero and half, and for any time step tau, which is less than or equal to t, where tau is not known a priori to the algorithm, and any sequence of payoff vectors f1, f2 up till f tau, where f this the payoff vector fi, the adversary can be adaptive to the actions from a1 to at minus one. So the adversary can look at every, all your actions except the current time step and then adapt it, adaptively give you the payoff vector. And each of these payoff vectors should lie in the range 0, 1 to the k. So suppose we have this and you consider any distribution, any other distribution p star, which is a uh, distribution over the actions. Then what we have is that this sum, summing from time is t equal to 1 to tau pt, which is the distribution chosen by the algorithm at time step t, uh, the inner product with ft. So this is in some sense the sum of the conditional expected rewards. So this is at least 1 minus eta, which is the learning rate and it's an arbitrary eta here, times sum t equal to 1 to tau, this p star, this arbitrary distribution p star, so inner product of p star with ft minus log k over eta. So intuitively what this is stating is that the in some sense, if you take expectation throughout on both sides, the expected reward given by hedge is at least a one minus eta factor of expected reward obtained if you chose, if you fixed any other distribution. If you chose, the, chose a fixed distribution, it almost follows that distribution up to a multiplicative factor of one minus eta and an additive factor of log k over eta. So, in, so you can use hedge to maintain an arbitrary distribution over the actions and hedge will do almost as good as any distribution, right? So this is, this is, a, this is not exactly what we want. We want a bound on the regret, but this form of, uh, this, form of gen, this general form is, turns out to be useful. So we will uh, prove this statement. And of course, now we'll derive also this corollary, which will bound the regret. So the corollary, in the corollary we want, we set tau to be t. So we want to look at the total cumulative reward up to t times this. 
and P star is just going to be the point mass on the best arm. Let me call it A star. So P star is just a point mass distribution and we set the learning rate eta to be square root of log k over t. So recall this is exactly why the algorithm needs to know the total number of time steps because it's setting the learning rate depends on it. So the learning rate is going to be square root log k over t and if uh, so usually we assume that the number of actions k is much smaller than t. So this particular uh, quantity is going to be less than one and in fact it's going to be less than half because uh, asymptotically we'll assume t is much much larger than k. Okay and let's assume delta is some known failure probability. Again we assume delta is given to the algorithm. Then uh, what we have is the following. We have that uh, with probability at least 1 minus delta uh, the following guarantee that the total uh, expected or the total realized uh, reward if we place A star throughout minus the total realized uh, reward obtained by the algorithm is at most 3 times square root t times log of k over delta. So the total regret is upper bounded by order of square root t times log k over delta. So square root t turns out to be the optimal dependence on t and it turns out that log k is also the optimal dependence on the number of actions. And I would like you to pay attention and remember this log k dependence. So we'll see once we go from full feedback to bandit feedback, we will lose uh, this dependence on, of, on the number of actions as log to uh, in fact it's just going to be square root kt later. So Notice that the dependence on number of actions is only like logarithmic. So you can have exponentially many number of uh, actions and still be good because it's like the regret is still bounded polynomial. And how do we, so it's not a priori clear how do we obtain this as a corollary from the previous theorem statements. So we use kind of two facts. We use the fact that the payoff is between zero and one critically. And we also use some form of uh, concentration inequality, particular, in particular the Azuma hefting inequality and kind of show that Ft of At minus Pt minus Ft forms a Martingale difference sequence. So we'll see more of this in the analysis, but this is like a teaser to how the analysis looks like. Okay, so in the next video, I will talk about the analysis of both these theorems.